Swinburne University of Technology. Hi, welcome to this podcast in which we're going to look at the installation of programming tools for Windows. So what do we need? Well, we're going to start by installing the Google Chrome browser, if you don't already have that. Then we need to install the MinGW development tools and a console 2 program, which will allow us to interact with those tools. We'll then install the free Pascal compiler, sublime text with the package control and the ability to export to HTML. And we'll have a look at creating a small Hello World program that uses all of these tools. Now remember, you only have to install these once. All right, the first one, installing Chrome. Open up Internet Explorer and navigate to the google.com forward slash Chrome website. And from here, you can download the Chrome browser and accept the conditions to install. Follow the on-screen prompts and this will go ahead and install Chrome. We need to use Chrome as it will allow us to print our code to PDF. It includes a built-in save to PDF file uh, option, which isn't available in Internet Explorer. When Google Chrome has finished installing, you can close Internet Explorer and close Chrome down and just return to the desktop. Okay, the next tool. Next thing we need is MinGW. Now this is going to give us some development tools that we need uh, to be able to interact or to create some of the programs we're going to create. Now this is a little more involved than all of the other things you're going to have to install. So take some time with this. Make sure you follow all the steps. Now the first bit's easy. We run the installer and we follow the prompts. Now this actually installs a separate configuration tool from which we can choose to install different tools that are available in the MinGW toolset. So once the configuration tool is installed, what you need to do is install the MinGW development tools, the MinGW base tools, as well as the MinGW G++ tools. So if you select those three options, just mark them for installation. You then go ahead and apply that installation. And the installation tool will go ahead and download all of the files it needs, configure those and set those up uh, for your computer. It will take a while to download and install, so you can just leave that. Uh, I'll fast forward through that. And when it's all done, we'll move on to the post-installation setup. So we need to do a few steps to get MinGW set up correctly after the install's finished. All right, so now your install's finished, we need to run a post-installation setup script. So open up your Explorer and navigate, the file Explorer that is, and navigate to c colon backslash MinGW. So navigate to that directory, and when you get there, scroll down and you'll find the msys directory. Double click to go into that one, and then double click to go into the 1.0 directory. In here, you should be able to see an msys program. If you double click that, you'll get a prompt, a terminal window that appears, and we can type commands into this and get the computer to do different things for us. This is the kind of thing that we're going to be using to compile and run all of our programs. Uh, this is the basic MinGW or msys terminal. We're going to install a separate one as part of these steps, one that has a few extra features like copy and paste, which this tends not to work too well with. All right, so once your terminal's open, you need to type a command. And the command we're going to type is cd space forward slash c forward slash min gw forward slash 
msys forward slash 1.0 and then hit the enter key. What we've told the terminal to do there is to change directory. That's what CD stands for. So change directory into C drives mingw msys 1.0 folder. So the same place we navigated to in Explorer before. Now in this directory, we can run another command. So type dot forward slash post install, one word, no space, forward slash pi dot sh. So that says to look in the post install directory and run the pi, which I guess stands for post install dot sh file, which is a script file that contains a set of steps that it needs to follow. Now this in post install will go ahead and install or set up all the things MinGW needs to work correctly. So press enter and it'll prop up some text. You need to follow the prompts so that you're going to install it. And when it asks you for the directory, type in C colon backslash MinGW and press enter. That's so that it knows where the basic or all of the other MinGW tools are installed. We're setting up the msys tools here. All right, once you're done with that, you can close the msys window uh, and we actually will open another one uh, just to make sure that that post install is all set up and ready before we opened it. Okay, now we're going to install the console2 program. To do that, type mingw-get one word, space install space msys minus console and press enter. This is going to get all of the files you need to be able to install that console2 program. It will download those, just wait for that to finish. And when that's finished, what we type is console minus config, enter. And that will go ahead and configure the console program and, and get it ready for us to actually use. When that finishes, we now have our console2 program. It will be called msys so that it relates to uh, the MinGW's msys console. We now need to find that program and the easiest way to do that is to use your explorer. So we can actually open an explorer window in the current directory by typing explorer space full stop and pressing enter in the terminal. Now it will run the explorer program. Full stop means the current directory. So run explorer and tell it where the current directory is. And you'll see that pop up a window. And inside that we've got the, the msys program there. You can double click that and that gives you the, the new msys terminal window. Uh, and you can see we can copy and paste and you've got right click get a few extra options there. It's a bit nicer to use. Now, you're not gonna to wanna to navigate to this directory every time you need to, to run the msys program. So best idea is to right click the msys program and pin that to your start menu. This will make it easy to access from your start menu. So if we go to the start menu, you can see it over there on the right as msys. If you click that, you'll get the msys terminal. All right, that, that's by far the hardest part of this setup finished. So we're nearly there, bear with us. All right, now we need to install our compiler. We're gonna be using the free Pascal compiler to start with in this course. We'll use some other compilers later on. Run the installer and follow the prompts. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, one thing you could do is remove the the one that places a IDE shortcut on the desktop. We're going to use a different text editor, not the one that they provide. So just remove that option, leave everything else the same, click next, next, etc. Accept what you need to accept and finish to install the script. Uh, it will go ahead and install the compiler. All right, done, that one was easy. So next is Sublime Text. This is just as easy. Uh, run the installer, follow the prompts, and we're done.
So when, when that's installed, run the Sublime Text program, and we're gonna to need to install a few extra options uh, inside Sublime Text. Okay, now to install package control. Open your web browser and search for Sublime Text package control. When you get the Google page that lists that, it should show you the installation page directly. Go straight to that page, save a bit of time. And what we can do is if you scroll down, you can see that it gives you some code that you need to run in order to install package control. So it's actually really simple. If you just copy that text, just select it all, right click and copy or control C, command C, etc., to copy, then switch back to sublime text. And from view, show the console. And this is where we can type some commands directly. So if we paste that command into that, wind, that little text box down the bottom there, press enter, then it will install package control. So it's not too hard. You've just got to wait a little bit. Uh, once it seems to have installed correctly, this one doesn't show you much progress, but it'll take a few, maybe a minute or two to install. Once it's done, uh, you've got package control installed. So hide the console and we can now use package control to install another, another package. So package control is a utility that lets us install what are called packages inside Sublime Text. And these packages add extra features to the text editor. And the one that we need is the feature that allows us to export our code to HTML. One thing that Sublime Text doesn't have is the ability to print things directly. So what we're gonna do is export our code to HTML and then use your web browser to print it to a PDF file, which you can then submit uh, as part of your, your weekly assessment for the unit. All right, so inside Sublime Text, to run the different commands inside Sub Sublime Text, what we do is hold down three keys. So on Windows, you need to hold down Control Shift P. With those keys held down, it'll pop up a little box into which you can type the command that you want to execute. So we're gonna use package controls install package command. We could type any part of that. Probably the easiest bit is to type install. So type install and you should see the option package control install package. Select that and press enter. That will run that command. This brings up another menu once it's updated the packages. And that menu allows you to select which package you want to install. So you can have a look through there. There's heaps of stuff that you can install. It's a Sublime Text is a really great text editor to use. In this case, we want the export HTML package. So type export, and you should be able to see export HTML. Uh, select that, press enter, and it will go ahead and install the export HTML package. You can, you can see the progress this time down the bottom left. So that's nice. You'll see that install we're all done. We'll show you how to use this in a minute when we do uh, a walkthrough of the, of the language and the tools. All right, now we're done. The very last step we need to do is to restart your computer. Some of the stuff that we've installed in Windows means that the computer needs to be restarted. Don't skip that. If you do, stuff won't work. Uh, not much fun. So just restart, everybody will be happy and I'll see you in a minute. All right, now we can use all of this stuff we've installed to create a program. Good thing is you don't have to install any more tools. Everything you've got, when it works, will work for the rest of the subject. So open Sublime Text, and we can create a new file, and we'll save it as hello world.pas. PAS stands for Pascal, and that will tell Sublime Text that this is Pascal code, and it will syntax highlight that uh, with that language, with the rules for that language. One thing to make sure you do is don't put a space. So it's not hello space world, it's hello world, one word, dot PAS. That's all just one word. Uh, the terminal, and lots of programs you run from the terminal are difficult to, to work with if there are spaces in file names or spaces in path names. 
Uh, so avoid spaces pretty much for all file names. All right, I'm going to save mine into the desktop, but you might want to save yours into a documents, my documents folder or something like that. All right, we can now type in our program's code. And as you do this, you should see this, the, the text editor highlighting different parts of the text in different colors. Uh, this is because it understands the Pascal programming language and can therefore use that to give you some feedback on how you're going. So this program is program hello world, semicolon. We then have begin. I usually put the end in straight away. The end matches the begin. So we start at the begin, we end at the end, put a full stop at the end, uh, and we will run one instruction, which is to call the write line procedure. So we type write line, write ln, no spaces notice, open brackets, and then in single quotes, we'll put the text hello world exclamation mark, close brackets, semicolon. So that tells, well, that's our instructions to the compiler for what we want the program to do when it creates it. All right, now we've got our code, save that file. Uh, use Control S or Command S on Mac. Uh, alternatively from the file menu, but get used to the shortcut keys, it'll save you time. All right, now that the file's saved, we need to compile the program. So you need to do this from the terminal. So open the terminal. On Windows, use uh, msys uh, or the mingw terminal. And we need to cd to the location where you've saved the files. So I'm going to cd to my desktop. On Windows, that will be cd forward slash c or cd space. So the space separates the commands, the parts of the command on the terminal. So cd space, where do I want to go? Forward slash c, forward slash users, akane desktop. It's akane, that's because my that's my username. So your username will be different. Type the appropriate thing in there. All right, now let's use the compiler to compile our program. Run fpc space minus s2. That's an uppercase s, not a lowercase one. Uppercase s2 and hello world.pass. That tells the compiler to run, or to run itself, so we're running the compiler. The dash s2 gives it uh, options to tell it how we want it to compile the file, and s2 stands for a more advanced version of the syntax. So syntax2, not, not the basic syntax, but the more advanced syntax. And hello world.pass is the file that we're gonna compile. So it's gonna compile the hello world.pass file and create a program for us. So when that runs, you can see we've got a hello world executable created on my desktop. So we can run that from the terminal, dot forward slash hello world and press enter. You could double click the file as well, but the terminal window will probably close straight away so you won't actually see what it's done. So it's easy to run it in this terminal. Okay, so that's creating a program, compiling it, the other thing that you'll need to do as part of the, the subject or part of the, a unit will be to submit code. And when we submit the code, what we're going to want is a PDF version of the code so that we can annotate it to give you feedback, etc. So go back to Sublime Text and press Control Shift P on Windows and Linux or Command Shift P on Mac OS. And this will bring up that menu of commands that we can tell Sublime Text. And we want to select the export to HTML command. So type export, and you should be able to see an option called export to HTML show export menu. Select that one, and then we're going to, you get a list of options. Uh, I'll select uh, browser view color on Mac and Windows, or sublime view color on Linux. So with Mac and, and Windows, that will actually open up your code as HTML in the browser, which is really cool. It will have all the syntax highlighting, will have line numbers for your fancy, all singing or dancing, etc. Uh, and we can then print that to a PDF. All right, now in your browser, we can print it to PDF. So in Windows with Chrome, what we can do is from the file menu, choose print, print and change the destination instead of being a printer change that to save to a pdf file that makes it super simple it'll do all the work for us 
We then click the save button, type in the file name that you want, and presto, we have a PDF copy of our code, nicely syntax highlighted, etc. And that PDF file is what you would submit uh, in order to get feedback. All right, we're done. So we've had a look at all of the tools that you need to install for Windows. And you've seen how to use Sublime Text to write your code and to export that code to HTML. You've seen how to use the terminal to compile your program uh, using the Free Pascal compiler and how to run that program. And we've looked then at using the web browser to print your code to PDF. So with, that's pretty much everything we need to be able to do. Now we can focus on what we actually do inside that program's code. And that will be what this unit's all about. So thank you very much. I hope that helps. And if you have any problems with the installation, uh, feel free to, to contact us on the discussion board, etc. All right, good luck. This has been a Spindoin production.